Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to our webinar this afternoon entitled What's New with Click? My name's Michael, I'm from Professional Advantage, and I'll be your host today. Uh, I also have Graham Smith here with me, who will be doing the, uh, the presentation and running through the content today. We're, we're particularly excited about today's presentation because we've actually invited, um, we've, we've opened the invitation to a number of people, those being um, organisations that are already working with us with a click solution and also organisations that may be looking for a BI solution and click may well be the answer to that, uh, to that search. Um, but as I said, we're particularly excited because we're actually going to be showing some new things within the ClickSense product, some new functionality that's become available. So it is relevant for those organisations and people that are already familiar with Click because you'll get to see the, what's next, uh, what else can I enjoy with the Click solution. And also for anyone that's not yet seen Click or is thinking about Click and looking for a BI solution, you'll get to see what's possible within the ClickSense range. So just before we get started, I wanted to just cover quickly uh, two points. One is um, we will allow some time at the end of the session today to answer your questions. So as we're going through the presentation, on the right-hand side of your screen in your GoToWebinar panel, there's a questions box. At any time during the presentation, you can type in a question for us and we'll allow some time, as I said, to go through those at the end of the session. And secondly, we will actually record this session for you. Um, we'll send that out as part of the follow-up and that'll allow you to either review the session yourself again or even forward around to someone else within your organisation that you think this may be relevant. So we'll send that as a follow-up. Um, I think we'll send it within 24 hours or 48 hours after the session today, but you will get a copy of that recording um, as part of our follow-up for you. So I'd like to hand over and, and open up the floor to Graham Smith. Now Graham um, has been working in a range of uh, roles within PA from a consulting uh, and architect perspective for, uh, for almost 20 years now and, and has shown a particular passion and excitement about getting involved with business intelligence. And we were talking earlier and we were, we were trying to figure out how long that may have been and I, I'm, I'm not trying to embarrass Graham here when I say this but he definitely has a lot of experience in the BI space and we were going back to working with SQL 2000. Uh, so for anyone that's been involved with uh, any kind of business uh, intelligence and data analysis and remembers back that far, uh, then you've got a bit of an idea on how long Graham's been working in the BI space. So Graham, with that level of experience, I know that you're perfectly qualified to take us through what's new with Click. So thanks, Graham. All right. Well, I'm going to show you a number of features. Some of them new, some of them have been evolving for a while. Uh, within uh, the the click world, um, so th I'm some of them I'm going to show in detail. Some I'm just going to talk about. So we're going to be talking about the master items and governance, uh, which is an important feature of uh, ClickSense and Click itself. We're going to talk with, with the new visualizations and some user defined uh, dimension coloring. Then I'm going to briefly talk about um, Click Geo analysis. I'm going to show you the Click View converter. Talk to you about uh, mashups show you some of the visual data preparation and talk about the quality features um, and then talk a little bit about uh, uh, advanced analytics integration. So some of these points are just to pique your interest and uh, you can follow that up later. Then I'm going to go in and show you some storytelling and then talk about the iOS app. So I'm just going to hop out of PowerPoint now and go into the ClickSense hub. So here I am in the ClickSense hub. Um, this is uh, the desktop version. The server version looks exactly the same, uh, except for the server version would have published apps. So the desktop is just for a development environment. So it's nearly uh, exactly the same as uh, what you see in the server. What we uh, there is a, a little bit of a difference uh, because it is development. So there's some extra bits that you see. So I'm going to go into an app here, one that we've developed. Uh, just a de demo app. So the first thing you do see when we come in here on the um, uh, within this app is a case of where it is different. So if you're a consumer of the, the, the app or the dashboards, whatever you want to call it, the web page, 
um, you would go straight into the dashboard. So because I'm in the developer hub, I come uh, into the uh, the area where I can develop ad sheets and light the light. So I'm just going to click into the dashboard. So this is what um, a user would see. So this this is some real data uh, coming up here that we've scrambled for demo purposes. Um, I'm just going to make a couple of selections, and as you as you notice, the the app actually updates as I make the selections in the background. So you, you know you can actually see the impact of your um, your selections, and that's not just updating this one page; it's updating every tab within this application. I'm just going to go on to the next page, which has got some uh, member ge geographical analysis um, side of things. Um, this is the uh, standard uh, interface that comes with, uh, with ClickSense for, for mapping. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, mapping a bit, bit, uh, bit later on. Okay, so here again, we can, we can make some selections. And so I'm making some selections there, reducing down to product groups that people have bought. I, I can hit the tick box or just, um, just lose focus on that particular area. And uh, we've uh, now made those selections. I'm just going to do a search, and I'm just going to chart type for Smith. And what that's doing is through the whole app, it will it will search through and it will find every Smith within the app. Uh, if I if I take off that product group, it was listed. If I do this again, I'll see Smith again, and it'll it'll show different charts where where the name Smith is in there. So. Another way of doing that is I could, I could um, I've got a list down here or a, a table here. You can't see much of it, but I'm just going to type Smith here because that's where there's name Smith. So I could do that and hit enter. Um, you might say that's uh, you know, having a table down the bottom. You know that uh, isn't really um, grand there. You can't see much of it. But what that does is it uh, is a not neat way of putting information and just hiding it down allows you to do some searches there. And any of these visualizations on the page, we can just select those up, right click, export the data, send to Excel, send to PDF, export as an image. Now, click sense, um, the development time for visualizations has got a lot faster because you don't have to worry about um, things like what platform the people are going to view that on. Because if I hop down and sort of go into sort of a tablet size, or if I go into the phone size or, or whatever, everything just automatically resizes. So uh, you don't have to do sort of planning of what, what's going on the real, real estate and those sort of things. I'm just going to hop onto the next tab here, pull up some information. I'm just going to deselect one of my selections. You no notice that, um, that the selections show above the top. So uh, even though I haven't got the date on every page, we've got it on the first page. Rather than uh, taking up real estate on every page, just because you, that's a thing that you're, you're likely to select, it's then available to select without having to tab back to the other page. Also on here, you'll notice there's some extra controls and a photograph. I'm just going to take a snapshot. I put a description in there and save that. I'm going to talk to you much later about uh, why I've done that. So Really, we're on the, on the first point, governance. So I haven't got there yet. So I'm just going to type a new sheet. I'm not going to bother naming it. And I'm going to talk about um, governance. So if we go in and edit as a developer, what we've got here on the left-hand side is we've got a number of charts. So I can just pull in a chart. And uh, then I've got something with extension objects. So there's a number of extensions uh, that are available through the, the App Store, the, the, the Click Mark Market. Um, most of those are free of charge and the like. I've got one there as the date picker and I've got an SVG reader. Um, then there's the fields. And if you're used to using click view, you would be used to using uh, looking up the tables and finding the measures and dimensions and having to work out, remember the products and dimension and uh, the sales is a, a measure. What we have with click sense here is the master items. So the master items are items that are classified into dimensions, measures, and visualizations. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm, and what that does is it, it allows these to be set at a corporate level. Uh, people don't have to worry about things. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just going to pull on my location up here. Uh, don't really have to worry much, too much about sizing. 
uh, it, it will size based on the information that you bring in. Uh, um, things like measures. So, you know, what, what you do is you set down a measure for what, what constitutes sales. So these formulas, uh, you know, we, we found in earlier versions and in ClickView, people write these formulas all the time and they're repeat, repeating them. So what we do is we've got sales, I can just drag that on here and put it down, and there, there I've got sales. And I'm gonna pull in another dimension here and I'm just going to pull in my rating code. I'm going to get rid of that one there. So I just put a couple of items on there so they, they allow me to be, uh, be selecting um, information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to my chart and I'm going to, and I can just drag it on, or I could press the button here, and I'm just going to add some dimensions on here. So I'm going to go through, through my master items here and add my dimension for my location, put that on there. I can drag the sales, uh, I can drag the measure in there, or I can uh, just type it. I can just start typing and start having a look at like that so very quickly now I've got myself a bar chart for um, for sales and I can make my selections so forth and I can deselect and I can cl clear my selections here and the like so that's so what the governance does is it, it keeps things in the central area. It allows somebody who's controlling the app to sort of control the, the naming convention and, and the like. And so say, for example, we wanted to change one of those dimensions, we could change that dimension and it would flow all the way through the app. So we've got a lot to cover here, so I'm going to sort of uh, be moving along quite fast. What the first of the new items I want to show is a distribution plot. Now, here we've got the till location and the rating rating grade here. Um, and I'm just going to clear these out and go into the edit mode. And I'm going to go through here and I'm going to add that rating grade over here on the bar chart. So if I drag that on, it asks me do I want to replace till location, color by it or add it. I'm adding it there as a dimension. Now when you add that dimension, really now we've got all these in a bar chart that doesn't really mean much because we've got this huge peak here for um, the locations and then we've got all our member grade uh, gradings down the bottom which really are so low they actually don't mean anything uh, you can't really tell much from that so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to now change that to a distribution plot and I'm going to convert that with a to a distribution plot and Nah, that's not actually what I want to see. I've, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my rating grade up here and put it, so it's rating grade first and, um, sorry, the, the till location first and rating grade. And the end users, if you allow them to, they can do that in the front end. I'm also going to go into the appearance presentation. And I'm going to make it horizontal and I'm just going to get rid of these. And now what I can do is I, I, I can start seeing the, the information that's there um, and I can start sort of seeing, okay, well, what's my area out here and start uh, selecting on items within there. I'm very sorry. I practiced this a number of times and I didn't really mean to take out my rating grade. So what, what I want to do is just select a number of the rating grades there and see where we've got. And there we are, I can see bronze, silver, and the like. And each one of these, if I look down, each one of those is bronze. I'm just gonna get rid of the bronze because we know the bronze are the, the, the most common people that were out there. So we, um, we want to actually look at what the rest of the people are doing. So if I click on silver, I can see silver are, are the, right up the top there on the expenditure within each one of our locations. If I click on emerald, then I can see my emerald customers Okay, well they're midway through, midway through, but here we go in Cafe Oz. In Cafe Oz, they seem to be um, the major one there, and that's our premium um, premium cafe. So I'm, I might be finding out something about the, inform uh, the information that that's showing. So this is a new visualization, being the um, the, his the um, 
<laughs> distribution plot. Okay, next new one I'm going to show you. I'm gonna hop in here and I'm going to drag the box plot on there. I'm gonna be lazy and I'm gonna convert that. Done. Now, the box plot, what the box plot does, it's uh, one that statisticians like and analysis like. Um, it breaks your data down into five areas. So what you can see on this block, box plot is you can see the minimum, uh, the start value, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, and the maximum. So that's another uh, new chart that's uh, available in the June 2017 release. I'm just going to go and add a new sheet and edit that and I'm going to create the third of our new charts. So the other new chart is histogram. I'm going to drag that on there. And I, for the dimension, I'm actually not going to add a dimension. So I'm just going to add a measure. So that's what we do with um, histograms. So what we've got there is it's automatically uh, added the data there. I'm just going to make some changes to the settings, turn it off auto. And I'm just going to have a look. What does it look like if I put 60 bars? And I can sort of see the spread of your data there. I'll explain this in a bit of detail further. Let's have a look at what it looks like with 100. Obviously, I can go into appearances and colors. So what our histogram does is it tells us the frequency of items. So I'm looking at sales amounts here, and I can see our major sales amount out there. The frequency that we sell is between the $2 and the $2.60 area. And, uh, you know, but, um, yeah, so that gives another different insight into your data. So that's on the, the, the three new visualizations there, distribution plot, the, the box plot, and histograms. Of course, you know, we're not looking at all the existing ones that are already there in ClickSense, but we will just have a look back at one of the earlier sheets that I've got here. Uh, this point of sales one here. Um, so I'm, I'm going to talk to you about uh, user defined dimension coloring. So uh, in the past, you could sort of write formulas and sort of say the bistro was to be such and such a color and so forth. Um, but now there's a wizard to do that, which makes it very easy to set down things like your corporate color scheme or, or um, set down a chart. You might want to put everything in gray except for a couple of areas. Uh, it allows you to highlight um, outliers and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to change this tab here, this uh, bar chart here. In actual fact, I can't change it because it's a linked visualization. But I know that's based on these uh, locations. So I'm going to go to the master item here and I'm going to go down to my location here and I'm going to edit it here. That's telling me it's already used, it's a master item, and changing it will affect other visualizations. So I, I knew, knew that. So I'm going to go in the value colors. We, could, we had colors before, um, but uh, you know, I'm going to set it to 100 colors. I could sort of set everything to one color or the like. So I'm just going to pick some colors here and set these and whatever and and they could be the corporate colors for that area and i'm going to save that and oh i was expecting it to change my colors down here hmm. so there might be a reason why that's not changing so let's have a look at that i know this uh here is my sales by location so i'm going to look at my visualizations for sales by locations and sales by location if i click on that as you can see, I get a mini version of that coming up in the preview window. Yep, I'm definitely on the right one there. So I'm going to edit that. Again, it's telling me that it's one I'm using. So I'm going to go OK for that. And I'm going to go into the colors and legend side of things. And I'll have a look. Oh, I originally set that by a color based on measure. So. I could change that single color by dimension as I wanted before and it's done. So that, that now flows through and if that um, uh, particular visualization, that bar chart is used anywhere else, uh, it, um, that will update that. And being um, a click product, you know, we, we might have some people in the front end who have built their own 
uh, visualizations based on these dimensions, and they would now be seeing the current um, defined colorings that we've set and applied to that. Just while we're on here, as I said, there's a number of visualizations. Uh, it, it is a pivot table, and again, we can sort of uh, use these as selection criteria. So that's um, the, the new visualizations and the colors. Next on the, the list to talk about, um, this one is uh, Click uh, Geoanalytics. So I showed you the, uh, the map that was there before, which is the standard map which, uh, um, that you can link to and uh, we just map via, via postcode or, or the like. But there was a third party product, um, Click Geoanalytics, which uh, uh, Click have uh, acquired in the last year. Um, now, uh, Click Geoanalytics uh, enables both for Click Sense and Click View users to easily add maps using um, automatic geo data lookup to reveal uh, crucial spatial information about and overlay them with different visualizations. But this allows people to see different stories for their, their, their data. Use, users can seamlessly drill down on this and find information based on those map points and also analyze data that's not uh, geo-related data. And while I picked up an example there that it happens to be a map, those maps could be maps of the body, uh, it could be interior of buildings, it could be anything that you're, you're, you're mapping through. So um, that's, that's a, an extension that's available for both the Click products. So I'm going to now talk about the, um, the Click View converter. So I'm going to go back here to the desktop hub and within here, there's a development hub. So if I fire that off, it uh, comes up in the developer hub in uh, Internet Explorer, the Click View Converter, and I'm just going to go to my C drive, and I'm just going to grab a file here. This is a real file that um, we developed with some information on there, uh, stock and um, customer information, and I just drag it in there and drop it, and there we go tells me I've already done it before. Oops. Sorry about that. Just drag that in there and it converts. Converting the assets and it's converted it. Now this this came in a short while ago and this latest version is really good. I've, I've converted a number of them it gives a number of click view apps and it gives you a summary of all the sheets and the objects that are on those, uh, the visualization charts and so forth, the dimensions and measures. Um, coming from click view, it's not so, um, uh, you don't get so much by renaming things here. So you might find some of these fields and so forth uh, you actually want to rename. So it gives you the ability to uh, rename those, uh, it shows you the measures shows you any variables that are in the document and any unconverted objects. And as I said, I've, I've tested a few out on uh, real client clients information and I haven't had one that hasn't had any unconverted objects so far. And then update the app and off we go. And it's updating the app, it's done. So that says it's now available in my ClickSense hub. So if we go into there, click view test and open that up. And what you've got in the, uh, is uh, a blank document as far as what's actually shown there. But if we go into the edit side of things, what we've got are all the master items that have come up. So those visualizations are there for us to drag and drop on the document and up they will come. So what that does is it allows you to very quickly then drag all the information that you had in your ClickView document and show it in click sense and uh, um, just because you don't have to worry about sizing and the, and the like uh, that's uh, you know why you actually want to reposition things and just drag them on you wouldn't want it to automatically play, place things in click sense because of the, the different behavior there um, so that's the click view um, converter 
Oh, okay. Next on the line, I'm just going to talk to you about mashups. So in the development hub here, there's a, a num number of things here. You can see that the, there's an extension that I've got in there. There's something called a mashup editor. Now, I'm not going to show you any more of that. I'm just going to talk about it the, in, in the context of uh, web development. A mashup is a web page or web application that uses content from more than one source to co create a single new service displayed in a single graphical in interface. The uh, capability of the API uh, allows you to easily integrate with your ClickSense objects to provide rich objects uh, on your web page. Now, these are probably objects that are being developed in ClickSense that you didn't really uh, have the view or in the intention to actually put them in a, a web page, but basically you can reuse them, reuse the ClickSense data and the calculations, and using the active content, your visualizations change when the state of the web page changes, and people can um, you know, subscribe to the data and uh, um, change the state of the visualizations. Uh, one I was looking at the other day was a research, um, medical research area where doctors were coming in and they were able to see the spread of their patients and the spread of diseases and so forth on the map side of things. And the patients, they, they were able to come in and they were only would only then see their own data and they would also be able to see the progression of their, uh, their illnesses. Um, so that was uh, very interesting. Okay, so that's mashup. So that's one that I'm just uh, putting out there to try and um, tantalize you to Come and have a look at if you if it's of interest. Okay, next on my list is um, visualization, visual data preparation, and data quality features. So I'm going to just create a new app straight from the fresh data, and I'm going to open it. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my page here, and I've got a um, Excel spreadsheet with some data on it, and I'm just gonna drag and drop it in there. So there's two tabs in there, sales and customers. So I'm going to pull in both of those um, tables, and I'm going to add the data. Uh, there's a few thousand records in there. Now what I'm seeing is I'm seeing here is the two tables, uh, and there's no association between the two of them. Now remember, or, or you might not know. Um, click is about association of the data. We're not joining the tables. It's not a traditional join. So it's basically saying there's an association between the customer and sales and what that what the link of that association is. Um, so if I I know there's a, an association there. So if I drop those two tables on the top, it comes up and it's, it analyzes through the, the whole data and says, well, actually, even, even though the, the the um, the fields are not named the same. It would have automatically linked them if they were the same name. But it goes through and analyzes the data and gives you a, a update on how much of that data matches. So in this case, you know, there's a hundred percent match between the between the two tables and uh, showing you all the customer code. So customer code and customers linked. So that's one of the the, the visualizations that's been there for uh, visual data preparation things that's been there for a while, the, the, the linking, but um, it's, uh, there's been more added in the June 2017 release. And some of those are data profiling visualizations, which can help depict the distribution of your data values in the data modeling, data bucketing, uh, which allows you to um, categorize your metrics and give them a new uh, user-defined attributes. One I did the other day was um, pulling in age, um, and we wanted age buckets, some very odd ones, 0 to 15, 16 to 15 to 18, 18 to 21, then 21 to 35, 35 to 55, and 55 and over. So we're just able to do that at this particular stage, and uh, it created them without having to go back and sort of uh, do any coding. Um, you can get data quality features to how to deal with zeros and nulls, you can split rows into columns based on um, you know, the data that's in there. You can set the order of the data, so how, how that order will show to the uh, end users. You can do data filtering before reload, so you can sort of say, 
based on a country, we're only bringing in the country information or a particular state or a particular year or uh, gender or something like that, so in, anything within there. And what that does is it um, actually reduces the data before reloading it into, into Click. Um, there's a concatenation tool for concatenating tables, so you might have uh, debtors, customers and prospects and you can just drag them on top of each other and map the fields, define how they map together. And again, it will give you the same sort of thing. It will tell you, oh, we think they should map based on these. Um, and a great um, addition to the June 2017 release is um, the ability to use, see the tables that are created by the data load script um, and actually pull those across and make associations with things that we've just pulled in from say Excel or another um, another application or another database. And where that's really good is you might have a, a big project, you, uh, hopefully we've been involved, we might have built a data warehouse and we've done all the scripting and got it all, all together and uh, done, done a whole, whole lot. And down the track you might want to add some extra information on there and uh, pull in some extra data. So instead of having to learn the scripting or come back to us, you can say, well, just grab that particular file in, visually pull it in and say, here's the association between the data or here's, here's the concatenation of it. So it uh, really does um, make that side of things very easy. Um, okay, so that is the data um, visualization preparation and uh, quality side of things. Okay, back to PowerPoint. Uh, and I want to talk about advanced al analytics integrations. So, uh, you know, uh, Click can hop in and pull into Google Analytics and these sort of things, but with the, the June uh, 2017 release, uh, we now are able to pull into advanced analytics in integrations such as um, R and Python. So the, these, um, these uh, organisations that basically do analytics uh, that's their, their bread and butter and so forth. They're, you, you don't have to recreate that in, in Click, and Click aren't saying that they're, they're going to be in the market of, um, of actually uh, building analytics and do, doing these sort of things. They're, they're all about the, the tool and the visualization, the associative engine. So now these, um, and virtually any analytics product out there, you can bring into Click and expose that as part of. Um, part of your story that you, you're telling with Click. Okay. Nearly there, just the, the, the last feature that I'm actually going to show you um, in ClickSense itself. Remember when we were back in the, um, the app overview, when we came into here, I mentioned about stories. Well, I'm going, going, going to show you the stories. So in the front end, this, this is where you, where you can build up your stories. Um, now, I've only had to train a client once on storytelling. Um, I, I'm going to tell any, anybody else who asks again that you don't need to be trained because by the time I got there, they said they'd had a, had a look at it and they knew everything about it. it and it is something like that. So basically storytelling allows you to sort of write some reports. It, it, well, it can be based on a static or a specific point in time of your data, or it can be um, it can be uh, dynamic based on the on the data that's coming through. So the, these are some that we've actually put in some text objects. We've grabbed objects in here just to show you how to do that. I'm going to click and add a page. Remember that um, snapshot library? So it shows you today. I've I've added that sales by location. So I can just pull that one in there. Done. And to actually then show that, come back to here, and you can use this as your your projection side of things. So we can we can go through the information here. I'm going to show you in a second. I'll show you now. We, we can actually send that out to PDF or PowerPoint. But um, the advantage of leaving it here in Click is that you can actually within here you can actually right click and you can go to the source and further analyze that data, have some things to examine it and then you can go return and you can return back to your story. So 
that is storytelling. And the last thing I uh, wanted to talk about was the iOS app, which is coming in September. So this will be available from the Apple Store. So you can download to your iPad. And what this allows you to do is you've got the enterprise server to um, actually take offline versions of ClickSense. So what that does is you can take the data, go up on your, on your flight, and you can interact with the app on your iPad exactly as you would within the web page. Now, that's uh, not to detract from the fact that um, you can actually access this data via a web page. So if you're on your iPad anyway through your Safari and you're actually online, you would just use the web page to interact for it. This is to take the data offline. You might be going on a long, long flight and you actually want to have the data and uh, um, analyze that while you're on your flight. Okay, as I said, I had a lot to cover and uh, that's where I wanted to get to, so thank you. Excellent. Thank you, uh, thank you Graham, and, and, and you're right. Look, I think it's it almost might have been the understatement of your presentation there that you, uh, that you covered a lot. Uh, <laughs> there, was, there was quite a range of things that you, uh, that you showed in terms of um, what's new, some existing um, cool functionality and even a little advertisement there for the uh, upcoming app in September. So look, just want to say a quick thanks for, uh, for, for taking the time to present us through that all within a, a reasonably short period of time. So we now have the opportunity to, um, uh, to go through some questions. Uh, if anyone would like to, to ask us a question, uh, and, and look, I, I say that quite, um, um, quite cheekily because um, it will really be Graham that's answering the questions, to be honest. But as a reminder, on the right-hand side of your, um, of your screen in the GoToWebinar panel, there is a little questions tab there. You can enter your questions there, and we'll just go through them now. So, Graham, I can see some questions have already come through. Are you, uh, are you ready for a, for a, a challenge? Uh, yes, I've had a drink of water. I'm... Excellent, excellent. Okay, so the first one, um, look, it's a, it's a little bit of a technical question, so I'll just go through it. I'll read it slowly there. So, um, do ClickView ETL QVD files transfer to ClickSense? Uh, it's a two-part question. Or can the QVD outputs from ClickView be accessed by ClickSense? Uh, uh, yes to both. So if you've uh, already developed a whole ETL process in ClickView, um, that, that will transfer across to ClickSense. So it works just the same way. They will be scheduled just, just the same. Uh, and produce the uh, QVDs. If you have a ClickView server and it's still up and running and you just want to access those outputs, the QVD files, they can be used as your data source within ClickSense. So it's a very, very, very rapid um, uh, transfer between, between ClickView and ClickSense now. Okay, excellent. Um, all right, uh, next question. So specifically for ClickSense, does ClickSense require any specific software to access? No, so there's no uh, add-ins to um, Internet Explorer or Safari or Chrome or whatever you're using. So basically, um, it's uh, just just through your browser. Obviously, you know, you, ha you have to have access and permission to, to, to view them, but uh, a browser anywhere. So pure, yeah, pure browser um, access there based on the security that you mentioned. Yep. Um, okay. Oh, security has actually come up with the next question. So uh, the next one is, can you restrict who sees what? Um, and that's, that's a two-part question. So both data and visualization. Uh, yeah, the, uh, so security can um, uh, go down down to the granular information, so you can sort of say security on uh, people are allowed to see certain measures within there, so allowed, allowed to see some, anything based on dimensions. So between click and click, uh, click sense and click view, it's all the same. Section access security. Um, so when, when you actually log into the app, you see what you're allowed to see. You don't see what you're not allowed to see. 
So it could be tabs that you're not allowed to see. It could be different versions of the tab. So, you know, we could have the main dashboard that ver uh, and everyone lands on the, the dashboard and it's completely different for uh, one person compared to the other. And, you know, if, if you're only allowed to see the New South Wales sales operation, you only see net New South Wales. If you um, drop on the, uh, on the drop down for locations, you don't see anything other than New South Wales. So you, you see what you're allowed to see and you don't see anything about what you're not allowed to see. Okay, excellent. Yeah, so you don't even get to see it. It's not that you, you don't even realise you're missing out. It's just not visible to you, which is good. That's right. Um, okay, we've, we've probably got time for, uh, for one more there, if, uh, if you're up for it, Graham. So uh, it actually relates, I think it relates to one of the first things you showed with regard to that map and that um, um, that image there. So uh, for the out of the box map feature, can we overlay more than one measure on the map? So I, I think the question is, can we overlay more than one measure on the map at, at any one time? Maybe the, maybe the question there. Yeah, ab absolutely. So you might have it um, that, you're, that you're, you're, you're seeing, generally you would have one measure uh, on there just because of the way uh, it, it re uh, represents. But if you wanted to base a select between sales, cost of sales, quantity, uh, those sort of things, you can have those so you can just select on those on the, on the visualization and you, and you can see the di difference between the two. Um, gen generally, multiple measures on the one map uh, are too confusing, but to select multiple measures is definitely something that uh, you, you, you want to do. Okay, excellent. Look, we'll, I'll, we'll squeeze one more question in because I think it may be relevant to um, um, to, to more than one one person. So, um, can we print? So, can we have a print option in ClickSense instead of downloading a file and, and printing? So, can you print from ClickSense? Yeah. Uh, um, so, uh, the, the, there is um, so there's a n number of levels. You, know, you you can you can right click on the particular object itself. Um, but what you would uh, generally do is you create a story. So you'd pull them into a story and you'd print from that story. So that, um, especially if it's something that you're printing every month, so you'd, you'd have that sort of pulled off and you, you selected the date and it would uh, print that. And, and of course there is, on top of that, there is the click end printing option, which allows you to pull everything into uh, the Microsoft Office side of things and have scheduled prints go out as PDFs, Excel, Word, PowerPoint, and the like. Okay, excellent. Okay, um, look, thank you, Graham, for handling the um, uh, the questions there. Uh, on the, uh, it's one thing to prepare the presentation; it's another to um, answer the questions there on the on the fly as we go through. So, so we'll, we'll finish up. Um, Graham, if I can just get you to um, to just move to that next slide there for me. Excellent, thank you, Graham. So, um, in terms of uh, what's next, so if there's anything that you've seen today um, that you'd either like to hear more about uh, or, or definitely interested in, and looking at how it can actually apply to your organisation, and um, for anyone that's already working with us uh, with Flick or working with us as an account that's already managed, please reach out to your account manager. Um, if, uh, if you're new to PA, uh, you're not exactly sure who that is, we've got an inquiries um, email there. You can also reach out to the organiser from today's, uh, today's session and today's webinar. So as I mentioned, we will uh, follow up and send through to you a copy of the recording today. So you can actually go through that again or, or share it uh, with uh, someone else in your organisation that may be interested. But on that note, I'd just like to say thanks again to Graham for presenting um, and a special thank you for everyone for attending today uh, and looking at this presentation with us. As you exit the webinar today, there will be just a short um, couple of questions that will come up which will allow you straight away um, to, um, to note your interest there and we can follow up with you directly if you have any other comments you can add as you exit from the webinar. So on that note, thank you everyone. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye.